I got a call one day, um, like on a, a Wednesday or something, and you're to go to Tokyo, uh, business affairs again, and get see if you can get the Summer Olympics, the 64 Summer Olympics. So I, together with a guy called Bill Trevarthan, who was the head of all the facilities, on like a day's notice, got an airplane uh, reservation, it was Japan Airlines, and we flew to San Francisco, and then to Wake Island, where they had to change the tire because there was a piece of steel stuck in it they discovered when the plane landed, and then on to Tokyo. And we had a lawyer there who happened to be an American. And we were gonna get involved in the Olympics. But Rune Arledge was already there. Uh, he, Rune Arledge and a fellow called Chet Simmons, who went on later on to become head of sports at NBC, was involved in the ESPN. They were already there, and they had it locked up. And what are these two guys doing in town? In any event, we met with the Japanese, and we had great meetings with them. And uh, we romanced them and so forth. And we put in our bid, which was the maximum amount that we were permitted to bid, $750,000. That's equivalent to half, $500 million today. We put in our bid, and we went away on a Friday night to a very famous hotel outside of Tokyo called the Hotel Fujiya. We were going to rest up, come back on Monday or Tuesday and find out where we stood. So Trevartan and I shower, shave, get dressed, go down to the bar. I'm having a bourbon and ice and water. He's having a drink. And there's a fellow with a big handlebar mustache. And he says his name is Peter Dimmick, a very well-known name in Britain. And he was head of outside broadcasts for the BBC. And he knew they had the Olympics because nobody else was going to broadcast it there. And he said, Rune, this is on a Saturday night, Rune's going to sign the deal Monday. So that means we'd lost. I mean, we'd gone through all this effort. So I wired Kintner, please send money. And we made an appointment call for Sunday night. We got a limo, went back to Tokyo. We got our authorization lifted to a million bucks. We went to the office we had to, took our letter back, gave him another letter, and lo and behold, we won. If we hadn't met this guy at the bar, we wouldn't have won. But there's an after story to it. Kintner, who was this great news guy, we got the Olympics. It was a great event for the Japanese. We put 15-minute summaries on after the local news. The local news, in most cases, then was uh, 15 minutes. NBC did a lousy job. Lousy job. And then when 68 came along, <clears throat> ABC won, and Rune Arledge taught the world how you do the Olympics. And the pattern that he set really took place four years uh, later. And if NBC had won in 68, I was then on the West Coast, so I wasn't, but I know he negotiated for them. I wonder whether it would have taken quite a while to get the Olympic coverage to the very high standard that Dick Ebersole now has uh, continued at NBC. Well, that was an important deal. It got us in the Olympics, and NBC thereafter was interested in them. And now, of course, it's become the Olympics network.